أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا افرض علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربي أني مسني الضر وأنت أرحم الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين وصل اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين so from the words, the book which is called Words, we are reading the 11th word, but making, but using it. Yeah. It's a means, so we can read the sentence and, uh, but we are emphasizing on the concepts. So really it's a, um, it is not a reading in reality, it's a study or critical reading, if you like, analyzing it, what, why he uses certain words, for what purpose, and uh, how can we benefit from that, as far as our understanding of, especially uh, putting uh, our faith belief in practice. How can we practice faith? Okay. Why? So everybody is going on, I think, live stream now. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. And after this field of trial and place of examination. Again, as soon as we start <laughs> reading anything, we cannot go even, we cannot go further because uh, uh, but we have to concentrate on the concepts. So, this is the place of trial and examination. Whatever the vocabulary they use. Uh, not trial, but tribulations and examinations, not examination, but test, etc. That's not important. What is the nature of this uh, word which, uh, which is described here as the place of trial, as the place of examination? We all know that the trial and examination is for the purpose of teaching not really putting us a trial, it means giving the difficulties so uh, that God will see whether we will fall into the trap or not. Now, God is not giving really difficulties or, if you like, the trial, when the trial uh, is used, we understand that it is used to describe calamities as we call them. Some things, any, any, any of the things that we don't like. We don't want to have it. So that trial and exa- examination is for the purpose of teaching. So God is the really is the best teacher. We should understand in this way. Rather than God doesn't know what will happen to me so that he is giving me a test, at the end he will say, hmm, he has not done his homework, he has not studied, he has not prepared himself, so hmm, I learned now. It is so ridiculous. So what is the purpose in trial? We have to question that. We have to speak if speak up. The people uh, love presenting rel- any religious subject 
to, to make it difficult. Why? Because only in the hardship they see suffering and through suffering you elevate your position. That is the understanding of, if you like, not only uh, nowadays the, uh, the, the millenniums back hardships are loved by, by certain mentality to, to teach people that they have to be ready. They have to get uh, uh, ready for the difficulties <coughs> so that as a result of this suffering they will get a higher degree in their uh, in the eye of God. And then of course normal human uh, as we are created human character or human qualities ask why does love giving difficulties and making me suffer so that he will be pleased. This is in reality the remnants of certain, we call it Israeli yad. Uh, certain attitude that God gets angry in order to soothe his anger we have to sacrifice. That's why in temple, what they used to do, they have to sacrifice in order to soothe the anger and wrath of God. So it is transferred, it, maybe, we don't know, not necessarily, but that is the mentality is, has been transferred into Islam, in, even in our uh, sacrifice. Do we really... Uh, give a suffering uh, of the sheep or the cow so that God's anger will soothe them by cutting the sheep? No one, no one has this idea. Slaughtering uh, signifies a, a lot of different things in Islam. Nothing to do with suffering, nothing to do with really soothing down, calming down God's anger or sound, wrath. The sound is yeah, the video of the internet for the for this isn't good. Um, What's is not good? The the, 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 web, the live cast. Yeah. The casting is good. That's what my wife says. Yeah, Muhammad was telling me that it's not working very well. So we could either try ending Skype. I think we should maybe just we could end this and direct everyone. Skype? Shall I? Skype is good. What? Is Skype that? is good. So we should just leave Skype. We can end this, and then next week, inshallah, we can figure out. Well, why do you think the problem? Do you think uh, the problem is from the it internet? It could be someone. The kids maybe have a video going. It could be anybody. Could there be is no, nobody here. Is here. Yeah. Or yeah. anything to do with the machine? Changing the machine? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's the internet. The volume the mic will be high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just it's the same setting I used to, to record share for you. So this uh, this understanding uh, of suffering, uh, uh, which, if you like, pleases God, is contrary to our relationship with God. That, but I would understand. Do we have any understanding of the creator of this universe that will get satisfaction by making his uh, creatures suffer? So we have to see the point in it. We have to interpret it. We have to understand within the general picture of the creator of God as the one who is merciful, as the one who is compassionate, as the one who is just. And as the one who really uh, takes, uh, how do you say, revenge. But what does it mean? Not for himself. You know, for example, the judge. If you harm somebody, or let's give an extreme example. If a person kills another person, or, or on a very unjust way, the judge says, you have to be punished. But... Do you think judge is angry with this murderer? No, he's just applying the rule, applying the law. 
You have to understand that. Not <clears throat> he is saying that, okay, I'm going to give you a good punishment that you will understand and say, God, I revenged. Do you see what I mean? It's nothing to do with the judge. So God is the judge, the judge, you know, with uh, uppercase uh, J. God is the judge. He revenges the right of his creatures over the other ones. And he's the judge. So we shouldn't think that God is really revenging me or the Satan or Satan, whoever you think that the enemy of God is. God is the creator of so-called the enemy itself, you know, we call enemy. Yes, he may be the person uh, or anybody who has a free will may take, an, uh, take up an attitude of anger or uh, negative attitude towards the creator and may be an enemy of the creator himself. Do you think that bothers about it? Think about the creator of the universe. He will bother about his enmity. If you are in the position of holding the whole universe, if someone says, I don't recognize your authority, what do you do? What do, you do? Smile at him. <laughs> that is the thing. Yeah, you, the most you have to do, smile at him. If you don't want to choose, if you want to choose not to recognize my authority, you will be the loser. But why? Why he will be the loser? Because he's given the qualities, the person who doesn't recognize the authority of God over the universe, or the creation, or over himself or herself. Why, does, why he will be the, uh, the loser? It's very clear. If I cut off my relationship with my creator, what is left? Think about it. I, I lose my point of support. Yeah? It means I am left on my own with the nature, accidents, or that, uh, haphazard happenings. So I will have no security for my existence. I will have no security for my future. I will have no security for my human expectations. I will deprive myself of the pleasure and uh, the, the security which I have in accepting and acknowledging the authority of the creator of the universe over me. That gives me security. Uh, you directed her, huh? She is here. Uh. <laughs> What's the question? Okay. So now I can ask a question. <laughs> um, so, when God punishes someone for their action, for their transgression against someone else, he's avenging that person's, he's, he's giving back that person's right. Mm -hmm. But if he punishes us for active injustice against him, hmm. he's teaching us. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, teaching. he's reminding, teaching us, because, that, uh, that's a good one, very good point. Let's say, I didn't recognize the authority of the owner of this universe over me. I said, I have no owner. I am left on my own. I exist by myself. I said this. If he says, all right, be happy with it. What do you think? If it doesn't give you any, uh, if you like, signs that what we have chosen is wrong for you, if you are, if you were as happy as the one who recognized his authority, as a human being, don't forget, would you be as happy as the one, would you like to be as happy as the one, you would never realize that you have done a mistake, you have made a mistake. Right? So it's good that when, it's a simple 
conventional example. When you cut your finger, it hurts. Isn't that excellent? Yeah? So, today I turned the gas uh, range on and I thought yeah, it was a cup, uh, the kettle, uh, the water bottle was on it. Uh, metal bottle, of course, water bottle was on it and I was expecting uh, for the water to boil. And I didn't know. I felt a very bad smell. <laughs> very bad smell. What's that? I didn't like it. That's why I looked for the source of it. Oh, the pilot in the ranch did not work. So the gas came out. I said, Alhamdulillah. The bad smell was good. What? This for me. Nothing to do with gas authority. <laughs> it's for me. Yeah? I cannot blame that the gas smells bad. I'm happy that gas smells bad. It is for me. We have to understand. Nothing to do with God. God is uh, self-sufficient. What is the word for it? About it's self-sufficient. It doesn't need anybody. In Arabic? Al-Ghani. Ghani. What is Ghani? It was, he doesn't need my appreciation of his power, his knowledge, his qualities. He doesn't need my worship. He says, why? How do we know? Look at the universe. But when we check our human qualities, that is the key point. You know, the, uh, using the human qualities, if you like, in relation to manifestations of the qualities in the universe and anal making the analysis. You will understand what is right and what's wrong. You will understand. And you will appreciate that as a human being. Look, if I don't, for example, if my child, for example, if I ask him to do something, if he doesn't do I said, oh, there is no pocket money today for you then. You haven't done your duty. So, if he says, I hate you, daddy. Because I'm not giving him the pocket money. What do I do? As a human being, use your human qualities. What do you do? Do you beat him up? Or do you just smile at him? All right, maybe. <laughs> you may hate me, but you will learn. <laughs> but isn't that human qualities? These qualities are given to us in order to be used as a gauge to understand the Creator's Absolute qualities. They are the manifestations. Yeah. That's why uh, uh, to look at ourselves or into ourselves. Take notice of our own given qualities, human qualities, is very important, essential to understand God. That's why it said a very famous saying, you know, whoever knows himself knows his Lord. Man it's a very famous saying. Whoever knows himself knows his Lord. It, means, it, it simply means that you can know who your Lord is, who your sustainer is, only through knowing yourself. But it, it, as if, you know, it, it looks like this attitude is an exclusive attitude. Exclusive means here. Excluding the revelation. You know, revelation gives the guideline how to use myself. Still, I, when I listen to the revelation, in order to benefit from the guideline of the revelation, I have to use my own human qualities in, in order to know who my sustainer, who my Lord is. Do you get it? That's with, uh, it is not an alternative to use the revelation. It is not an alternative the human qualities, using the human qualities, is not an alternative to use revelation, to benefit from revelation. Methodologically, this is important. So, 
I, I have to be, or we have to be confident that there is no suffering. God is, yes, a revenger is the revenger, but he is uh, the best translation for Ghani about self-sufficient, doesn't need, or he is free of need. And we don't use the, in our halakas, we don't use the definitions, you know, uh, taken for granted. He is self-sufficient, he is free of need. How do you know? It's very simple again, who will answer. How do you know that he is, uh, al Ghani is self-sufficient, he is uh, free of need? Because he's the absolute creator of the universe. Uh, yeah, but how do you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll start from... Very simple, yeah? Change your attitude. Yeah? Don't start from God. Yeah, look at yourself. Look at the creation. It's very, a it's very necessary process we have to go through. Our, our minds must be, must be uh, ready or get, uh, must get ready to you to think in this way. Because it is the not a completely new thing, but for those people who are born into a Muslim family or environment, community, it is new. They love the Muslim community in general. They love uh, speaking from God's perspective and saying that God is such and such, God is such and such. And then establishing their argument on that assumption and they say, but we have learned this assumption, these things from the revelation. But revelation needs to be confirmed. So you have to, we should never neglect this method. Revelation needs to be confirmed. Very simple. If you read all the names of God, whoever lists, they, they, they have many lists of it. Uh, and anyway, you have to confirm through uh, observation. I can ask, how, how, do I, how do I know? Look at the universe and confirm it. After confirming it, say, I understand that whoever uh, is, create, is creating or has created this universe must be self sufficient. He doesn't need anything. He, he's not in need of anything. I can see it very comfortably. Right? As a human being, not only as a Muslim, he doesn't believe. Huh? No, he is the universe. The universe is out there, and I, I am the human being who has the consciousness of, who has, given, who has been given the consciousness of what the qualities the existence have. The existence has. Okay? These qualities witness that he is self-sufficient. If someone says, no, 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 God needs to sustain the universe, somebody else's, or something else help, for example. If, ca- if they can prove it, yes, you are wrong. If, is there any way to prove that it makes sense for you? That God needs somebody or something else's help to uh, the creator of the universe need, is using somebody's help or something else's help to sustain this universe or to sustain the earth or to sustain my body, my being. If someone proves it, we are wrong. We have to be open. But, no more. Ask yourself. Okay. You mentioned that um, you know, to confirm the 99 names through observation. What about the names? Because it depends. No, on they, we cannot really limit to 99. No, but I All the qualities. That's like a really you know, beautiful thing to say you know, through observation to yourself. So, but just to like see another example, how would you, like, for example, confirm something like uh, you know, at the, you know, the most uh, the returning? Is that the correct translation? So, what do you say? Okay, uh, returning, which means, you know, some people say, uh, most of the some, some people <coughs> say, said, no, it's not working. Some is uh, accepting the returning. You know, God's another name is the believer. 
al mu'min right what does it mean yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what what does it mean to confront the creator. So, but God Himself is the believer. Oh, El Mu. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, we you can say, whatever is reflected in your being, do you have the ability to confirm? Yes. Mm-hmm. And this is right. This is wrong. Make the distinction, and decide. Where did you get the say? Yeah, whoever made you. Yeah, that is a guide. Again, another principle. We have to start working, so. (coughs) Okay. Uh, So, we have to again define what the Quran is. What does the Quran teach me? Yeah. It teaches, it is expected to teach me as the creator of the universe and as my creator how to use my, if you like, equipment to teach me how to use it. My equipment as human beings, human qualities, and what is out there in the universe. So I have to say. God says, I am the mu'min, the believer. You say, ah, I should understand that my ability to confirm the truthfulness of something is from him. It's a manifestation of his quality. But he is the absolute source of everything. Every quality that we see here. So even we do something, God says, what is it? Ramayta is Ramayta? Allah Ramayta is Ramayta, Rama. Wama Ramayta is Ramayta, Walakin Allah Rama. What do you mean? It says, when you throw, but it says, when you throw, be careful, I'm underlining it, maybe double underlining. When you throw, you think you are throwing. It's not you who is throwing. It's God who is throwing. What does it mean? All the ability that we are experiencing here or exercising here in this world are given to us by our Creator. They are the source of my abilities are Him. Source of my abilities is Him, not me. That's what He is teaching me. Read the Quran as a guide. How many times? Yeah, but it, it needs continuous reminding. It needs continuous reminding. Why? You are not used to. Excuse me, just get this. Yeah, we are not used to seeing or handling the belief matters on these basis. Belief is something whether you uh, you accept it or not. Ex- you know, something aside. Not your reality. As if, you know, uh, do you like this? And you say, no, I don't like it. Do you like it? You say, yeah, I love it. Okay, you like it, I don't like it. No, not like this. Belief is essential in my being, given to me, of course. So I have to use any belief matter as related to myself. And I have to confirm it. It must be my, if you like, inevitable, inevitable, as if, essential conclusion. But of course, this is not in court and court essential. Yeah? Conclusion. Belief must be my uh, inevitable conclusion. Otherwise, that is my conclusion. That's it. That's my conclusion. I cannot do more than this. But for example, uh, that is as a human being. I use my uh, I use my abilities and see that 
whoever is the source of my existence should be, must be of necessity, of necessity, logical necessity, the source of the existence of my quality. Right? Did you get this? Whoever is the source of my existence must be the source of the existence of my qualities. Whoever gave me my existence must be the source of the existence of power, power, my power of sight, my, my power of reasoning. Think about it. You know, you go crazy. How do you think? How do you think? How do you analyze? How do you come to a conclusion? How can you decide that this conclusion is right, but that conclusion is wrong? As a mathematician, how do you do that? That's given. So this quality God will say, using the same guideline, when you throw it, it's not you who is throwing it, but it's me I am thro throwing it. It's the source of your... Throwing ability is me, acknowledge it. When you realize that one conclusion in an uh, equation is better than the other or more correct than the other, right? It is not you who is doing it. The creator is doing it. Acknowledge it. That is the guideline. That's how we should read the Quran or the lit uh, any scripture, any divinely inspired source. <coughs> We have to read this and see the consistency in it. Is it really true? Can you say, no, 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 it is me who is really doing it, or having this quality. It is my own production. Can you say that? Can anybody claim that? The power of sight, power of reason is your own production? Or the production of the nice things? <laughs> that you eat. I don't want, I don't know the name of it, but in, in the desert. Cantaloupe. Sorry? Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe? Yeah, kind of differently. All right, I don't know what it is, but it, is, it looks something nice, <laughs> you know, for those who don't join us. <laughs> and personally, that they will be jealous. <laughs> so it is, it is, we, we can make the distinction easily Easily, we can make the distinction easily. People are coming to Skype. Okay. Read the Quran, the revelation, as a guideline. Okay, that's beautiful. You, then you can conclude. Uh, a lot of things after uh, after reading the Quran as a guideline. So, shall we move from there? Okay. Shall we move from the text? One word we read so far. <laughs> all right. So, although it may it may seem to be repetition, you know. But it needs, a step, uh, it needs to be really, really confirmed and established. And it must be a second nature to us, that how to, uh, how, which kind of attitude we should have towards a revelation. It doesn't mean that the revelation is a secondary source, no, no, not a primary and secondary source, nothing. Revelation, revelation, there is the part of this world, this existence. The prophet is there, somebody claims something. What do you think? Yeah? Somebody <coughs> came here and so said something. What do you say? That's how I am experiencing. I either reject it or confirm it. That is what I am experiencing here. So, revelation is another, from another aspect, a part of the creation. It doesn't mean that the Quran is a part of the creation. No, no, e everything. For example, my, uh, my being here is a part of uh, existence. 
So my, my being demonstrates that I am created, so I have a creator. All right? When I hear the voice f- through the prophets or the people who say that we are employed by God, when I hear it, it is a part of the creation. But I conclude that it, if I am satisfied with, the, with my conclusion, I conclude that this spe- the source of this speech is the creator of this universe. It means absolute, then revelation, the source of revelation, the real speech of God is non-created. As your existence witnesses that the create uh, to uh, witnesses to the existence of your creator do you get it that is a big problem that made a lot of fuss about it whether the quran is created or not yes that's correct it's a very important point but this is not only one matter that the quran is created or not it is it is related to every manifestation of the names of god or all, all the qualities which we witness here on earth must be understood in these terms. Right? My being createdness is the witness of the creator or is the witness to the existence of the creator. Right? So I hear the voice of voice from the prophet like you and me, a human being that is a creator form of it. That, that's why we hear the revelation is a part of my existence. That is also a, a something uh, neat, if you like. Well, for me, for the people. We cannot ignore that, let's say, with the very famous one, we cannot ignore what Aristotle said, what Jesus said what Muhammad said. This is a part of my life. I hear it, even the narration. I read here the narration. I read the narration. This is a, that is a part of my world, my universe. Right? That's what we, should, we have to understand. We cannot say that revelation is as far as I am concerned. Don't misunderstand that. As far as I am concerned, revelation is not the part of the universe. As far as I am concerned, revelation is the part of this universe. Prophets are the part of this universe. We, do you remember? We read long time ago, Nursi uh, defined the prophet as how? Sorry, the sign, uh, the most luminous sign. Did you, did you remember somebody? Most lum- luminous sign of the or sentence or sign or part of the creation is. The universe is Muhammad. Let me read the exact word. It's a, it's a very crucial definition of prophet. There's something unusual. Let's read the from the. Yeah, the the other. Uh, there are great universal things which make known to us our creator. It means the means of learning something uh, beyond the universe. Right? One of them is the universe itself. Universe witnesses that I have a source of ex- my, I have a source of my own existence. And the other the This is the book of the universe. The other one is the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the supreme sign. Be careful with it. The author is very precise, and you cannot really miss any any word. 
in his writings, generally speaking. The page is 243, if you want to read it. Yeah, yeah, 243. Yeah. Very delicately chosen language. The prophets are, in general, uh, if you want, if you want to talk about Muhammad, please and blessings be upon him. In particular, the prophet. But we can say the prophets are the spring signs of the book of the universe. It means. We will explain. The spring, the prophets are the spring signs of the book of the universe, which means it's it's as opposed to the other signs, they actually talk and tell you what they mean. Mm -hmm. I mean the other signs talk to you but not in a human language. Mm -hmm. They do directly okay. talk to you in a mm -hmm. the prophets like the Surah al Fati of just a minute. The methodologically, what this sentence is telling me. The, uh, this, uh, the sentence is telling me again, I, I will repeat it. The prophets are the supreme signs of the book of the universe. They're the embodiment of revelation. Sorry? They're the physical embodiment of revelation. It means, physical body means? A revelation, that they are the, their revelation may manifest in action. The yeah, body. what does it mean practically? It, it spring signs or sentences. They confirm the revelation. Of the, the let's, let's do this. What is the significance of this sentence? What is, the, it is, what is uh, this sentence teaching me? By saying this, the prophets are the spring signs. Everything is a sign. But the prophets are the spring signs. But still, they are the signs. But better signs, spring signs, most luminous signs, okay, of the book of the universe. Of the book of the universe. It means they are a part of the universe. Right? The prophets are like me and me, do human beings. They are the part of the universe. So we cannot really say religion is something uh, aside. This is the universe, but any matter related to faith or belief is something aside. No. Not something aside. Aside. Aside means the prophets are not the alternatives to the universe. They are the parts of the universe. How about the message they bring? The scripture? Yeah. The scripture? The, the, huh? That's what we have discussed a little bit. Uh, before what we had, uh, what we jumped into this topic. You see, these are essential points that we have to learn. No, I didn't understand that part. Does mm. the part about the scripture being part of the creation, but not the? Uh, but as far as I am concerned, I can see the prophet in his body. I can hear the voice when he speaks. I can hear the voice when he transfers the revelation to me. That is the part of the universe as far as I am concerned. Yes? Like, like the mountain, the tree, and the animals, and human beings, or the stars. Right? You're talking about you, or me personally, or yeah. through intermediaries? No, no. What do you mean? Explain. You're saying, I can hear the prophet, or I can see yes. the prophet. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, now, because I wasn't created during the life of the prophet, but narrations, the same thing. Don't you hear the narrations? And that brings the whole question about authenticity of narration. Though. No, no, no. It's nothing. To, not no top. It's not. It is nothing to do with our discussion. Authenticity of the narration, but it is out of context now. 
when I hear, the, for example, the Quran or the narration, uh, uh, narra- uh, any sentence, sentence narrated from the Prophet, it is a part of my universe. Right? We are not talking about authenticity or non authenticity It's not related to our topic. How, how, which kind of attitude I should have towards revelation not separated from the universe? Because uh, be, not separated from the rest of the universe. Why? I don't want to name any religious tradition. It's very widely, if you like, exploited understanding. Not exploited. No, 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 no. This the word is not expl- uh, maybe misused. Oh, mm, misused. <coughs> another word. Let's find another better word for it. Uh, abused understanding of religion is to say that matters related to religion has nothing to do with the universe. Separating it. So, let's establish this. Let's establish this. For me, the prophet is the part of this universe. And the message I hear is a part of this universe. Be careful. Be careful. Don't, uh, don't go back to your previous knowledge. Be careful. Be patient. But, uh, the message I hear, either through narrations or through books or through <coughs> people's uh, speech, whatever, is a part of my universe. Now, what did I hear? That this man, this person, a part of the universe, proclaimed that I am employed by God the creator of the universe. I would say exactly like any other creature. The tree proclaims that I am employed by the creator of the universe. Right? Be careful. Okay. The tree is created but it points to the existence of the absolute being. So the prophet comes with a message saying that this is not my word. This is what I have been inspired. So what you hear is my voice. But the origin of this inspiration is God. Okay, The origin of the qualities of the tree are reflections, manifestations of the creator. So, everything which looks to me is created, which looks to its creator, the creator is absolute. The speech of God is absolute. The quality of the creatorship of God is absolute. Right? Not created. It means, do you understand? Everything. For example, we, we, we studied this last uh, Wednesday. You know, the, except the aspect which looks to God. Everything is transient. Everything is created. Only kullu shay kullu Only the aspect which looks to it is creator its source of existence is absolute. <coughs> so, when I read the Quran, you hear a created voice. But you understand that it is coming from the absolute source. Okay. okay. So, did you get it? So, look, you can ask the question, but it is very sensitive point. Uh, if you misunderstand, uh, it harms you. If you understand it rightly, it benefits you greatly. Because your perspective of religion will change. 
So you have to say, I don't have an independent religion from my existence. Your belief is, is not an independent entity. Your belief is your conclusion under the witnessing of your own witnessing, your own reality. So making religion or faith is an alternative to your existence, to your reality, is not what the Quran teaches us. It is human policy. But it, we have to be very careful here. For example, again, Nursi says, an extremely important sentence, he says, if you take the Quran out of the universe, the universe will go mad. What does it mean? For you. You will be left with a meaningless, stupid being which has no purpose, no message, no significance for my being. I'm going to die. It will. That is for you. So the Quran is the mind of the universe for you. For you. Right? Quran, the speech of God, is the mind of the universe for you. In reality, for itself, he is is the is the is exactly the same way as the universe. Universe is something that you can touch, right? You can experience, you can eat, you can step on, right? But how about the source of the universe? Can you touch? Can you experience physically? Yeah. Can you eat? <laughs> All right. Now. So, the Qur'an is the same. You can hear, you can reason, but the source of the speech, this speech, is eternal, absolute. So, let's use the word, technical words now, Arabic. Kalamullah is uncreated. The word of God is uncreated. What you hear is created. I understand clear. No? So, the universe is created, but the creator of the universe is absolute. Absolute means uncreated. That's what, that, that is the significance of the, if you like, debate, arguments that the Muslim scholarship, as soon as they have received the Quran, yes, soon after, the first thing the Muslim community started concentrating on and disputing on and trying to understand this to what this topic. Without solving this topic and understanding it, you cannot go further because you have no base. What, so you said Kalamullah is absolute, mm -hmm. but what is not again? Sorry, I'm what not you hear. It's created. So, Kalamullah, because Kalamullah, you consider that as part of, all, of all, Allah, but it, uh, uh, part of God. But it's nothing so about part of God. You cannot say part of God. You cannot, can you say that something is, I'm turning to the mathematician here, mm -hmm. to witness, get from him. Can you say that this number is part of absolute, absolute incomparable? So, Kalamullah, as far as you are concerned, not Kalamullah, but everything, the creatorship, mm -hmm. being merciful, being just, all right? Mm -hmm. Every, everything, you know, being the shape giver, musawwir, it's a very obvious one, you know, we have to benefit a lot from it, the manifestation of shape, shape, uh, shape giver. It's, uh, it's there, always. So the source of these qualities are absolute. Finish. Don't try to define absolute impossible. It is not required from you. It's not within your capacity. It's not expected of you. 
We understand? Don't say a part of it, something, because it goes into many, many complicated arguments. Okay, what did you say? Kalamullah is? Absolute. But isn't Kalamullah just like any, like Khalqullah, which is not absolute? No, no, not kha- uh, no, it's di- the different. It's any. So it's like Khalipiyatullah. Do you see what I mean? Is that? Is what? Okay. Of course. That's in this said, mutakallim, being mutakallim is absolute. Mutakallim is absolute. But what we hear here, that's different. That, that is extremely important in order not to fall into dualism, which most of the people have already. Dualism. That's matter what we have Faith. But as an alternatives, as alternatives, as something different. Right? So I don't really uh, believe in the universe or whatever. I leave universe aside, but I have my faith independently. It is impossible. You are not being realistic. It's not your reality. You are in the universe. Do you get it? So, I am created, right? I am a part of the universe, and the prophet is the part of the is a part of the universe. He comes with the message, and I hear the message as my guide to use my human abilities. I conclude to confirm it or to deny it. That's my conclusion. That is your religion, not independent of the universe. Faith, belief, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, you know, this word is better, doesn't matter. The concepts are are not to be discussed in terms of um, dictionary meanings. Doesn't matter. What do you mean by it? What do you mean by it? Whatever the language you use, you may say creed, you may say belief, you may say faith, whatever the language, the word you use, doesn't matter, is different from your word now. That's false. This is not your reality. We have to be, we have to accept our reality. That's why when I worship, I worship God, who is the Lord of this universe. Allahu Rabbul Alam. Yeah, if you say, I worship God, but if you don't really mean that the Lord of the universe, it means you are not on the track of the teachings of the Quran. You are making two different entities in your life and turning your back to universe and saying that faith is something independent entity. It's not something independent entity in your life. It's your conclusion. Right? You say, but it's given by God. Oh, you're most welcome. It's given by God. That's correct. But your eyes are given by God. Your hair is given by God. Your hands are given by God. Your water or your uh, sustenance are given by God. Right? Everything is given by God. Let me take that a step further. Um, and apply it to, you know, our current situation, uh, can a secular society, a secular government, etc., can that truly be a just government and a just society without the establishment of spiritual morals to back up what is considered moral within that government? Yeah, we will study this next Wednesday. Inshallah. Uh, oh, no, 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 not next Wednesday. I'm sorry, because uh, I have been working on on it, on it, I don't think it, it, not this, this Wednesday we are going to start something. We will study what uh, good deeds are in, in Arabic with the language of the Quran, Amel Salih. What makes an action good, Salih? So you will, un- inshallah, we will concentrate on uh, this topic because, as as I always say that. Uh, in our discussions, 
seems to be all controversial subjects are brought into discussion, not the controversial subjects that we, we are concentrating on and to solve the problems of the world, but fun fundamentals. If the fundamentals have not been established, we cannot go further. But we keep our religious life as separated from our normal daily life. So that is called dualism. And when we say Islam is the religion of Tawheed, the unity, there is no dualism in Islam. Is, is there? There is no dualism in Islam. We, we, in, a, in a rhetoric way, we say it. In our rhetoric, that there is no dualism in Islam. Islam doesn't accept dualism. Yes? Islam is the religion of uh, the creator of this universe as being the only creator and everything belongs to him. That's it. Priyat. But concepts but. like the separation, the quote-unquote separation of church and state, these are just shallow concepts because it's not because according to this, it's not really possible to separate the spiritual from... Of course. You're absolutely right. It's impossible. It's not realistic. So... so Someone says, you know, what we are practicing it, they are not practicing it. For example, if you don't teach, if you like, not if you, you brought the subject to the practical uh, reality in America. So, if you don't teach creationism, but that is the, uh, how do you say, the language used now, it may have another meaning next century. But for the moment, creationist approach. All right? You have to teach secularism. You have to choose one. You cannot say, oh, we separated it. You cannot separate it. But then you impose. If you don't, if you like, teach the children means imposition. If you don't really teach the children secularism, you impose. Religion. If you don't teach religion, you impose secularism. But Islam says, no, no, you cannot do that. You, you have to interpret what is called nowadays secular in one way, not in two ways. Either you say the secular is material, right? It belonging to this world itself. That's why it's secular. It's mundane, right? <laughs> Belonging to itself, then you, you say that there's no creator. But it belongs to itself. Either you approve this, confirm this, or the other idea is, no, it doesn't belong to itself. It is being made, it's created. The other, uh, other option is, you have to choose one. It cannot be true at the same time. Or two of them cannot be true at the same time. Right? So you have to choose one way. There is no dualism. It, it, dualism uh, is practically impracticable. Um, impracticable? Say the word perfect. Say one, one person. What you said, yeah, impractical. Practicable. In practice? No. Which one is correct? You cannot put it into practice. Practical. It's not practical. Impractical. Yes, okay. Impractical. Thank you. Thank practical. you. Impractical. Impossible. What do they do? They pretend. <coughs> because for you, you know, when you are uh, having something, let's say with a fruit, talk about a fruit, now you are, when you are. Uh, biting a, a pear, all right? You cannot have two attitudes. Either this biting and getting the taste of okay. the pear is from the pear itself or from the absolute source, the creator of the pear, who is the absolute one. You cannot do two things. These two cannot be true at the same time. It is illogical. But is he was asking about the, the belief system or the practical system for the state? This is a different. What, whatever, whatever it is. No, no, no. I mean, like, 
Because what, what, we're, what, we're, what, we're, what I'm understanding that Dr. Ali is saying is that you cannot separate sort of like the, the physical with spiritual. No. Or, well, I mean, no. the, yeah. You are? You are. It's, it's you not. are in the physical world. You are responsible for your interpretation and confirmation of your physical world. There are not two words. Right, there are not two words. So, the so that these people are interpreted that oh, words. that is impossible. That's cheating. And so, like that's why, like I said, like if we take it a step further, then the whole concept of the separation of church and state is ah. a complete fallacy. Yeah. Complete fallacy. Obviously, it's a trick. It is, just it is impossible. Okay. Why do you smile? <coughs> Can I ask so, welcome. Do you follow me? I think... It, are you following me? Do you understand it? But the very end, you don't know what's going on. We have, we have to admit. You know, we have been uh, talking about these very, very subtle matters since uh, 10.30 or... 10.45. Okay. Okay, 10.45. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. So the people are coming. So, are we... Are we settled down? We should never forget that we are in the world. We are expected to decide about the source of the world. Either deny it or confirm it. That's your choice. There cannot be two at the same time. One conclusion, today's conclusion. When God tests us, examines us, it means, the, go back to the original vocabulary we read today, teaching us. Not knowing which kind of heinous people we are. <laughs> no, no. Teaches us. The test and exams, exams and whatever the quizzes are the part of teaching. And there is, there is uh, no in, in independent creation which burdens us with calamities. The, everything is for teaching purpose. So look at it for teaching purpose. Regard them as teaching, as a teaching means. So the tests are, the best tests are, best teachers use quizzes, etc., in order to confirm what they have already taught the children and the students so that they will notice. Because he, he, he gives, the teacher gives some tricky questions in order to attract their attention. Not to make them fall. So they, they will fall. They will say, you see, you missed the point. You didn't listen to me carefully. <laughs> that the teacher says, that is the best teacher's attitude. The, uh, if you like, the creator, my creator is the best teacher. He teaches me with, through mis my mistakes. But gives me the opportunity to fall. But this falling is not the ultimate purpose of my existence. As some religious traditions take it. Takes it. Not the, falling is not the ultimate purpose. Falling is the means of training, education, and perfection. Do you understand? Teaching. So, if something happens, any calamities that I don't like, happens to me, I will ask the question, what is my creator teaching here? Teaching me here. So, what is he teaching me here? Exactly, we gave the example of the smelling gas, bad smell, or the bleeding, when you cut yourself, that we understand the desire, the way of teaching that what I have done was wrong. Not to punish me. For me, I may get it as a punishment, but for the Creator, is a warner. Yeah? He's warning me that I'm, to, uh, I'm doing something wrong. It's the grace of God. It means, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَدْ عَلَىٰ Oh. 
ورحمتي وسعت كل شيء إن right it means even in the manifestations of the calamities you have to see try to see the mercy covering them it, the mercy is there in teaching so when you take a quiz and if you fail in the quiz you will see the mercy of the teacher there you say ah you do that do you do sometimes give quiz Mm -hmm. yeah so so you will give some tricks so that the people uh, the students will fall you will say you see they didn't notice this so that they will never forget not to get pleasure from it and we also concluded today that the wrath of God it doesn't need to be soothed by our sacrifices because there is no suffering in reality that we have to sacrifice something in order to cool down God but we have to sacrifice our own ambitions from our own ambitions from our own perceptions from our own understandings the time is 12 o'clock is it right? Yeah. Inshallah, we have to conquer slowly. But you didn't have tea. Okay, Inshallah. These are fundamental matters, and we have to go to the fundamentals. Right? Are we happy with this? We have to establish the fundamentals. Without establishing the fundamentals, gathering information about religion causes only bigotry causes only confusion, not really clear-mindedness, and also makes us as, um, let me remember the word, uh, dogmatic. Dogmatic. God, my creator, uh, by definition, my creator cannot, should not, as far as I'm concerned, offer me a dogma and confirm it without knowing why. Is it human? So, religion cannot be dogmatic. So, uh, we have to read the Quran in a way that it should not lead us to or into dogmatism. So why do other people they blame us? The religion is the dogmatic. Yeah, but why ask they tell them. Us? I don't know. <laughs> Go out of the masjid and ask those people. We are here. We don't say that. So that is their uh, misunderstanding, or I- if you like, their uh, impotence in understanding what religion is in reality. But what we do, not other people. Don't you hear the YouTube? So lots of discussions are going on. Lots of books are written offering religion in a dogmatic way. And the religion of Islam is presenting it as a dogma. So, so we have to be very careful not to. Is everything in religion um, approachable by reason and analysis? Like what part of it is no, why do you say only reason? Everything concerning religion is approachable by human qualities. There is no such separation and division in human qualities. You cannot. Because no one in the world can use his reasoning without using his emotions, feelings. It is impossible. Feelings decide and reasoning is a tool in the hands of the feelings. So the, we have to treat human beings as a whole and together so we cannot separate them so if anybody says that only heart is important why my hands are important as well I don't want to lose my hands Uh, my ears are important as well I don't want to become a deaf right so uh, my mind is important as well intelligence is important as well you cannot use the argument on the Vice versa way, you know, in other way. So, human beings cannot be separated. So, you know, in, in, in using any separa- separatist language is <laughs> false. <laughs> okay, inshallah.
Would you like to? But a lot of people today stop at the level of reason. No. The, the roof for them is rational, rationalism. The, it means uh, they are not using their human qualities, and uh, we don't know. We don't know. I don't think so. It's not uh, realistic. If someone, I can argue against what you said, not against you, not against what you said. So, if someone decides to use my rationality only, it is an emotional conclusion, because he himself or she herself doesn't want to go further than that. That is her heart or his heart. Do you understand? So, uh, so some people are very sensitive about it, saying that reason cannot function without having its base, the feelings. It is human being. So, if someone wants to be Emo, uh, rational only it is it means it is his conclusion but emotional conclusion Out of fear. Well, his yeah. choice he knows what will happen if he goes further he doesn't want to he doesn't prefer but not he doesn't give a name or uh, appearance that he's uh, he's really acting in this way as a result of his feelings or preferences do you understand? It is the preferences that we decide. And then decide to use either one way or another way. That's it. Mm-hmm. So that is emotional as well. What so, about so, Hikmat? Sorry? Hikmat. Yeah. What, what do you mean by Hikmat? Hikmat. So, a lot of things we don't know the reason. We cannot know the reason of the oh, why that, that Allah made it. No, 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 no. But no. It is, uh, Allah made the things with oh, no, no. so we don't have to... No, no. We, we, can, we cannot speak in this way. We, we, we cannot speak in this way because okay. uh, we, have to be, uh, we have to have the base for our arguments okay. like this. We're saying that Allah made, we don't know, okay. but it's different. But I, you don't have to know uh, uh, everything, but we are, what we have to conclude about the source of the existence of the things, mm-hmm. not the uh, reason of the existence of uh, the wisdom mm-hmm. in the existence of the things are not important. We don't need, cannot know because the wisdom is endless. Yeah, yeah, so yeah so wisdom. Is, wisdom right? Yeah, okay. so we can we can really uh, we, we should uh, bring okay. this into uh, this kind of discussion today. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim al-akhir da'awahum. Yani alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fat.